She has been terrific with a double-double in all three NCAA games and is hitting almost 77-0% of her shots from the floor. And away we go. Cochran jumping up against Hillman. Louisville in their home whites as the number one seed. Van Lith with three straight 20-point games. Cochran wearing a face mask because she took an elbow in the eye in the Sweet 16. Let's take a look at today's Capital One starting lineups for Michigan. Danielle Roush, who sat on the bench pretty much for the first three years of her career as a starting point guard. Brown Fielder, who was brilliant, had the game-winning shot against South Dakota. And Emily Kaiser, also a player who had been a role player and has been a key starter for Michigan. Louisville starting five, already talked about Engsler and Van Lith. Kiana Smith, their best outside shooter. And Chelsea Hall running the point. The grad transfer from Vanderbilt. Cochran rounding out the top five for the team from the ACC, who finished second behind NC State. Well, I think it's going to be really important for Michigan to have four around the perimeter. You cannot have two low post players and allow Emily Inksler the freedom to come double Nas Hillman. Felia, the freshman, misses her first shot. It's been so big for the Wolverines. Van Lith so tough off the bounce. Really able to rescue it. These two teams met back in early December in Louisville. The Cardinals won going away. But both sides saying that was a long time ago, and this should be a whole different ball game. Hillman had it blocked. Engsler, great defender. Emily Engsler does such a good job of staying vertical, of using her long arms to get her hands on the ball. All defensive team in the ACC was Emily Engsler, her first year. Last year, she was not going to take her remaining year of eligibility next season. And there you see the Danielle Roush effect. One of the most fiery players on this Michigan team drew the charge. Yeah, good job of Ra by Roush of keeping Chelsea Hall in front. You can see the outstretched arm taking the charge, but you're right, Pam, this is a player who is so vocal on the sidelines. He was really an emotional leader for this Michigan ball club. And the Michigan defense has been terrific. Look at what they have done in March. That includes the Big Ten tournament as well as the NCAA tournament. All three NCAA opponents, none of them have hit the 50-point mark. That's American, Villanova, and South Dakota, all held under 50. Nice pass, Van Lith to Cochran, and another charge call. Well, that was a heck of a pass by Haley Van Lith to Olivia Cochran. And Nas Hillman gets outside the restricted area, establishes herself, and takes the charge. Inside to Hillman, didn't handle it cleanly. And a three-second violation called against Hillman. All-American from Cleveland, Ohio. My Forsberg, Kevin Pettel, and Katie Luconic are officials, Wooden Award finalists for National Player of the Year as well. And this has been a tremendous student-athlete at Michigan. Anna Smith, that's her spot. Well, Louisville's a team that knows Michigan is going to come with that hard show on the pick and roll. Finding the right pass when you come out of that screen and roll is key. Kiana Smith's a good option right there. Julia with another miss. Angsler coming up with the board. Angsler had a double double in the victory over Tennessee on Saturday, her 12th of the season. or thought about it. Cochran, that's a blocking foul on Kaiser. Well, making the right pass and the right play is so important against this hard show. And Kiana Smith has been lighting it up all season long. And that was a great pass by Cochran to find her. Smith, the best three-point shooter 
as far as volume on this team. And now Cochran heads to the free throw line. And that was an elbow that she took. Tamari Key got her. And it was looking really nasty yesterday. It, it was. Looks a lot better today. But certainly an adjustment for Olivia Cochran, playing with the mask, learning how to see out of it, the feel. But how about the job Olivia Cochran did one-on-one -on -one against Tamari Key in that Tennessee matchup? I mean, she is a player who battles inside. And this is what you can expect from Louisville, just with their relentless full-court defense. Well, you're not going to be able to pass over Emily Inksler on the top of that. Using pass fakes, getting behind the ball. And Kim barnes -Rico talked to us about the fact that we have got to take care of the basketball. We've got to limit our turnovers. We cannot allow Louisville to get up and down in transition. So they absolutely feed off of their defense. Talked about shortening their passes, too. Right now, it's, the tough thing is getting the inbounds against them. This is a Louisville defense that punts the basketball. Leah Brown in and out, rebound, excellent. So already has four rebounds. And she already has four or five deflections. That is her bread and butter. That game earlier in the tournament was 17 deflections. There's a pick by Hillman, who's going to wait for some help. Did not have numbers. Maddie Nolan will check in for Michigan. She is their best three-point shooter. Long pass, Brown, good look. Angsler again. Michigan getting good looks, just not able to knock them down. And then the finish for Smith. Man, we've seen this Louisville ball club a lot this year. And watching their growth on the offensive end of the floor has been a lot of fun. Early in the season, didn't have an identity outside of Dana Evans. Now, this is a complete team that can hurt you from multiple positions. This is not just one player you can key on. Hillman fouled as she tried to split the double. Michigan 0 for 7 from the floor. Cochran goes out. And Liz Dixon comes in. They are a terrific tandem that Jeff Walls can turn to to help defend Hillman and other terrific posts. And Haley Van Lith really working in there on Kaiser. Hillman gets Michigan's first field goal of the game. is in achieving the impossible brought to you by Adidas, beating American and then Villanova and a terrific win against South Dakota to get their first Elite Eight in program history. For more, let's head over to Christy Winner Scott. Michigan head coach Kim barnes Rico stole a quote from Jim Harbaugh that said, most teams start on third base, but we, we started in the dugout and now we're an Elite Eight team, but they are not satisfied with that for Louisville. They have faced Michigan four times in the last five years and have found success in all four of those games. And Jeff Walls, he said that we cannot settle for home runs or triples. We have got to hit the singles. And this will be a battle of defensive discipline with a ticket to the final four on the line. Well, Jeff Walls has been saying that all the last few weeks, right? We want to hit singles. We don't have to make the home run play. We just have to be solid. We have to be fundamental. And they have to. Four times since 2017 that they have met. The previous three, including in December, Louisville has won by at least 20 points. Haley Van Lith. I'm telling you, the way that Haley Van Lith is playing and shooting the basketball, you can't have a short closeout right there. You have to have a disciplined closeout with a hand up. But I'm telling you, she plays at all three levels. And this is a confident player who has, who struggled early as Maddie Nolan gets a three but who is not struggling any longer. Yeah, Haley Van Lith has really taken her game to a new level, just a sophomore. Maddie Nolan, who hit the three, is their best three-point shooter. Anxler, just 
a little bit too strong. It was online, and Hillman comes up with the rebound. The winner gets South Carolina, the number one team in the country. Engsler doing Engsler things. Takes the ball away. Now Chelsea Hall backs it in. <laughs> now she had a good offensive game against Tennessee in the Sweet 16. Coach Walls has wanted her to shoot more. Well, she had nine points in the third quarter alone, it, it did Chelsea Hall, and she certainly can and be that fifth scorer on the floor. But the thing about Michigan right now is when you have a team like Louisville that is denying you the basketball, you can't just stand and try to seal for the ball. You have to cut, you have to backdoor cut just like that where Nas Hillman was able to get a layup. So Nas Hillman with five of Michigan's eight points. There's Kiana Smith. Dixon, nobody on Angsler, but Hillman closed quickly. Angsler took it inside, little contact, nothing called. Maybe inside three minutes to go in the first quarter. That's dangerous dancing over there, too. If you're going to come back door, you've got to just go. Nolan now from the other side. Pam Maddie Nolan really struggled against South Dakota. She was 0 for 9 before she hit a big three in the fourth quarter, 1 for 10 for that ball game. It's a good sign for Michigan. She's hit too early. Hit first two in the bottom of the net. Van Lith bottled up, and then Roush tapped the loose ball to Brown. Louisville doing a good job getting back to shut off the transition offense for Michigan. Angsler defending Hillman. That's a great matchup. Kaiser left open. That's a good slip. That's a really good slip. Louisville hard showing on those on-ball screens as well. The slip out forces a help rotation, which again would open up offensive rebound opportunities for Nas Hillman. And a 7-0 run after a very slow start for Michigan puts them in front for the first time tonight. Nolan and then Roush. And they call a foul on Roush. Michigan, you mentioned it, Pam, struggled early, but has found it. Maddie Nolan subbed into the ball game to do just that, hits her second three. And this is a great read by Emily Kaiser. She has the ability to face up, and you see this watch party at the Michigan Student Union. They're loving it. That was the reaction to the first bucket made by Michigan. It was Nas Hillman. And she got it, a bucket and an and one. Thanks. Hall for three. Just her 18th three of the season. Well, she certainly is capable of knocking down that shot. Oh my, good defense. That's what Mikasa Robinson does. A tremendous defender came over and forced the turnover with the help defense. Well, the last time these two teams met, Nas Hillman had five turnovers, and she struggled with turnovers against South Dakota as well. The thing that we're used to seeing with her is that poise and that composure. Very rarely as Van Lith hits it and holds the hand up for a while. I don't know if I've ever seen Nas Hillman really frustrated. No, no. I certainly haven't. She's somebody who just who she stays composed, she stays positive, she stays active. One reason why she was a first team All-American. Celia almost took steps. Amy Dilk taken away by Van Lith. Two on one. She has Kiana Smith to her left. And the charge drawn. This time by Maddie Nolan, who is fired up. Well, this is a good read by Maddie Nolan in transition. Did not go for the pass fake, stood her ground, took the charge. That's three offensive fouls Michigan's thrown in this ball game. And the fifth turnover, shot clock is off, waning seconds of the first quarter. Still guarded by Hall. Here's Nolan, desperation three. In the first quarter, 
in Wichita is in the books. We go into the second quarter, Pam Ward, Stephanie White, and Christy Winter Scott joining you from Wichita. The winner, winner will get South Carolina in Minneapolis on Friday night. Time now for our player spotlight brought to you by Sirius XM and Emily Angsler played her first few years in Syracuse and has just taken it to a whole nother level with Louisville. Yeah, she really has. I mean, she is a player who has committed herself to being a better basketball player, who has committed herself to getting in the best shape possible to prepare herself for the next level. Double double against Tennessee on Saturday to keep their season going. Chelsea Hall continuing to be aggressive to the basket. Number 44, Cameron Williams coming up with the rebound now for Michigan. Cameron working against Dixon and they're gonna get Williams. This time it's Mikasa Robinson who drew the offensive foul. Well, you mentioned it, this is what Mikasa Robinson does, and she didn't get the first one, but she kept battling, and right there got the second call. Anna Smith forced away from the basket. Robinson's not much of an offensive threat. You see Hillman on her. Dixon. Williams, good stop there by the Wolverines. Yeah, that was really good defense, staying vertical, forcing Liz Dixon to shoot over the top. I think right now you've got to try to get Williams a touchdown low with Mikasa Robinson because there has to be help when that happens. A huge mismatch in favor of Michigan. Shot clock winding down. Nice. Nice. I mean, that's where <laughs> that's where Nas Hillman is just so good. She knows the double team is coming. Michigan knows there's going to be that high post dive. You drop it off. The next time they help on that dive, you got a wide open three on the backside. Hillman averaging over two assists per game. That was a nifty one. Okay, Chelsea Hall continuing this weekend to make damage or do damage on the offensive end. Williams over to Felia, guarded by Van Lip, who was able to take contact and step around. Layla Felia has just really come into her own, playing confident basketball, attacking the rim. She had 14 against South Dakota, 12 of which came in the first half, and none better than that game-winning drive. True freshman from Cincinnati on the all-freshman team in the Big Ten. Tremendous future ahead of her, present not so bad either. Meanwhile, Van Lith, smooth. That's all you really have to say about it, right? It's just so smooth. And that was highly contested. Roman out of that double team. Feel you, that's a tricky pass that Hall intercepts and then is able to score over and around Nas Hillman. Well, Chelsea Hall has been big early in this basketball game for Louisville, knocking down three threes, getting to the rim, strong finish. I mean, that's the tough thing about defending this team. You, you think about, we, you focus on Emily Inksler and Haley Van Lick. Well, Kiana Smith gets going, Chelsea Hall gets going, Olivia Cochran gives you something inside. Production from everywhere. Dilk taken away by Hall. He then tried to squeeze it between her feet. Great start for Chelsea Hall, a transfer from Vanderbilt, where she scored over 1,000 points and played for one Stephanie White. Chelsea Hall can be a heck of a scorer. She hasn't needed to be that for Louisville. But obviously, when, it, when the number is called, she's able to go to work. She will take a break. And after scoring 11 points, three threes in this game. We will go on a 7-2 run. And with good defense on Kaiser, who is discernibly taller. 
Now Van Lith with the trail three. That's well off the mark. Hillman streaking into the lane. They found her. That's a great pass by Leah Brown in transition. And that's where they're going to have to find Nas Hillman. If you can get her some easy scores running the floor in transition. In the last five games, Nas averaging a double-double. Let's see back to five. Van Lith. That's a backcourt violation. Hillman being the pest that time. Six turnover for the Cardinals. And Nas Hillman could put on a clinic on how to hard show. There are so many post players who don't want to get out there and commit to a hard show, and Nas Hillman does it every single time. And a motor that just keeps on motoring. Plays hard whether they're up 20, down 20, tied. Great player. Nolan harassed out there by Kiana Smith. And now Kaiser lost it. Kiana Smith. Threw it away. Here's a two on one. Van Lith with the nice finish. That's those live ball turnovers. And Michigan's done this a couple of times. They get caught down there on that baseline. You've either got to keep driving that ball or you've got to have an outlet in front of you and right in the middle of the floor. But I think Kim Barnes Arico would rather Danielle Roush go out of bounds right. than throw it for a turnover and a score. Well, it became an easy two on one break. Trying to get it inside. It bounces around and stays. Michigan basketball. Leah Brown employing the official to say that the ball was kicked so they could get an extra 10 seconds. And Chelsea Hall already with three threes and 11 points. Chelsea came into this game with just 17 threes in the first 32 games. And she's got three of them so far to help give Louisville this seven-point lead. And also 12 of Louisville's points have come off of Michigan turnovers. Going back to your point about wanting and what Kim barnes Rico said, limiting particularly the live ball turnovers. Yeah, she, her, that's her, her number one key was handling pressure, keep them out of transition. I mean, the best transition defense is good offensive execution, and Michigan has not been able to take care of the basketball. All right, let's head over to Christy Winter Scott. Michigan head coach Kim barnes Rico just told her team that. She said, we have to make great reads. They are doubling so hard on the ball screen action. They have to make better reads, have better patience on the offensive end and the live ball turnovers they just can't have those she said we'll take it if it's a five second call we'll take it if it gets thrown out of bounds but when they are off to the races in transition that's when louisville is at their best yeah she's absolutely right and there have been a couple of possessions where just not making the right decision and, and you see what's at stake right here michigan seeking their first final four louisville seeking their fourth but it's been a minute since they've been there. Yes, 2008 was the last time that Louisville got there. They had gotten to a couple of finals. Their first two trips, both times they lost to Connecticut, but Michigan back-to-back -back Sweet 16s. They'd never been to a Sweet 16 until last year, never been to an Elite Eight until this year. And now Nas Hillman trying to lead her club to the Final Four. Shot clock is inside of 10 seconds. Daniel Roush, boy, they can't make those passes either. No, no you certainly can't. Emily Angsler is everywhere. We are in Wichita, Kansas, where Louisville is leading Michigan 26-19, just under four minutes to go in the first half. Pam Ward, Stephanie White, and Christy Winters Scott joining you. The winner of this game will take on South Carolina. Congratulations to Connecticut, double overtime win over NC State. 
as they will play defending national champion Stanford in what is going to be a very high quality Final Four. And if you're just joining us, if you watched uh, Connecticut win, you missed a lot, a lot. Uh, what, 16 minutes of basketball? Yes. Uh, Michigan started off cold, Nas Hillman being brilliant, and Chelsea Hall, usually not an offensive threat, only averaging seven points a game, has 11 so far, including three threes. Second time this year these two teams have met. Louisville won handily on their home court in early December, and that's just not giving up by Emily Kaiser. Yeah, really good move inside by Emily Kaiser. Louisville going to the 2-3 zone for a possession. And Kaiser able to take advantage. Cuts the lead back down to five. Michigan already playing in its first Elite Eight. Robinson slicing through, but then a little bit too much on the shot. Hillman way out from the basket. She will not shoot from there. That is one thing that she'll have to work on when she goes to become a pro, is extending her range. Extending her range, working on her handle, at least being a threat from the perimeter as well. And certainly from an undersized post position, she has been able to get the most. 2,000 point scorer, 1,000 rebounder. Nobody in the history of Michigan men's or women's basketball has done that. It's a brilliant career for Nas. First team All-American this year. First All-American women's basketball ever at the University of Michigan. And Leah Brown at the basket, or at the uh, free throw line after being fouled by, by Kiana Smith. South Carolina ending Creighton's magical run yesterday in Greensboro. And the winner of this game will take on the Gamecocks. Oh, that's a nice move. Where have you been all my life, Chelsea Hall, on the offensive side? Well, Jeff Walls was talking to her today about being aggressive on the offensive end of the floor. And, and again, if you think about adding a dimension of Chelsea Hall being a double figure scorer to an already well balanced Louisville attack, where do you go from a scout standpoint? Yeah, that's the big difference from last year. Dana Evans' as Felia shows you how good she is. Had the go ahead field goal to beat South Dakota on Saturday night. I love how fearless Layla Filia plays. I mean, she really is fearless. She's not afraid to take the shot. She's not afraid to attack the rim. It's a terrific defender. Just a true freshman. That's over to the Michigan bench. Well, Chelsea Hall's knocked down a few threes, so you have to close out tight. And a great job with the acrobatic finish inside. Chelsea Hall already with 13 points. That is two off of her season high, 15 that she had against Kentucky. During the regular season, we go in Kentucky always having that rivalry game. Oh, Mikasa Robinson, just a defensive devil. That's a travel. Coming up at the half, it is the degree report. And we'll break down this game, Michigan Louisville, and recap that double overtime thriller between Connecticut and NC State. What a NCAA tournament it has been so far. Angsler should have gotten an assist on that. Yeah, that was a great read by Emily Angsler. An emergency switch. Roman drew the foul. Pam, I don't even know how she caught that. I mean, going up between two people, she was able to come down with it. Personal foul on Makasa Robinson. And it sends Nas Hillman to the free throw line. She gets there seven times per game on average. She's 12th in the nation in scoring this year. And this is just really a drop in the bucket. We would need a lot bigger graphic to get everything <laughs> yeah. that she has done at Michigan. Yeah, she certainly has. She has impacted this program in a way no other player has. And Kim barnes Rico always finds it hard to put into words the impact of, of Nods Hillman. And not, not just on the basketball court, but in the community, on campus. Just a tremendous ambassador for the University of Michigan. 
And now Michigan's only down by one. Robinson looks back to Coach Jeff Walls for some instruction. Nelson Hall with the shot clock winding down. Smith is not going to get a shot off. The shot clock is off for Michigan. They have trailed for the vast majority of this game. Trailed by as many as seven. Oh boy. Chelsea Hall is having herself a great day until Nas Hillman decided to spoil the party. Are you kidding me? I don't, where did she come from? Nas Hillman running in transition, chasing down Chelsea Hall and swatting that thing into the stands. Not even close to being a foul, and that right there is a microcosm of the hustle and heart of Nas yes, Hillman. Yes, it is. Wow. High motor, high competitive spirit. Deanna Smith able to slip in and score after the Hall offensive rebound. And Louisville, welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Nas Hillman's mom there on the left, dancing. Michigan down by three to Louisville. The winner of this game will move on to the final four to take on South Carolina in Minneapolis on Friday night. Just some of what we've seen. Nas Hillman, come on. Are you kidding me with that block? And the bench, 15 strong, they say. Look, she hasn't been able to stop Chelsea Hall all the time. 13 points, two off her season high. It's been a great first half so far. Pam Ward, along with Steph White, and uh, Christy Winter Scott is with us as well. Uh, Louisville, with the lead here, got off to a hot start. Yeah, they sure did. I mean, this is a Louisville ball club that's known for their defense, but their offense has been tremendous in this NCAA tournament. <laughs> Pam, they were knocking it down from three. Every was getting involved. Haley Van Lift got one. Chelsea Hall got three in the first half. Five of ten from the three-point line. They only averaged six a game, but Nas Hillman had some answers. Certainly a great opportunity for her to get on the offensive glass. Finish plus the and one. Finding her teammates when the double team comes. And we talked about that block. She ran Chelsea Hall down the full length of the floor to send it into the stands. Not here, not at Nazis House. Take a look now at our first half stats brought to you by Geico. Louisville, five of 10 from distance. Chelsea Hall by her own self is three for three. Van Lip and Hall doing most of the scoring and turnovers. That's the one thing that head coach Kim Barnes of Rico said that Michigan had to limit and uh, they've been hurt by turning the ball over. And they have, and really Michigan needs to do a much better job in this second half of taking care of the basketball. Let's go over to Christy Winter-Scott. Thanks, Pam. I spoke with Jeff Walls, and he said on offense, they need to get Emily Inkler more involved. She hasn't scored yet, but she has eight rebounds, so she is still impactful for their team's success. And Kim Burns Rico for Michigan, she said, we need to mix up our pick and roll and have it be big and small, not just guards. They need to have someone slipping to the rim so they can score in the paint. And that's a good way to score in the paint right there. Layla Filia getting downhill. She is a playmaker for this team. Van Lift, terrific pass from Engsler. Haley Van Lift just has such a good awareness of where she is around the rim. She can finish on the strong side. She can finish on the opposite side. And there's Layla Filia continuing to be aggressive. Had the go-ahead bucket that proved to be the game, be the game winner, pardon me, against South Dakota when this place was jam-packed and loud on Saturday. Michigan down by one. Exler, as Christy mentioned, has not scored in this game, averaging 12 per game. Has been terrific in the NCAA tournament. A little bit under the weather, kind of a kind of a cold. But she said she'd be ready to go come game time, and she certainly has been. Cochran, limited by a couple of fouls in the first half, gets her second bucket. 
Maybe a doctor wearing a face mask because she took an elbow in the eye area on Saturday and went over Tennessee. Angsler, that's what yeah, she does. It is, and, and that has to be a, about her seventh or eighth deflection in steal in this ball game. She doesn't have to score the basketball, although she is a great offensive player to impact this basketball game. So much damage on the defensive end, and Chelsea Hall is on her way to having a career night. Well, Pam, we talk about seniors and their sense of urgency, and Chelsea Hall is one of those seniors. Angsler's on the board. Quick two after another turnover. Cardinals feasting on that all season long. First in turnover margin in the ACC. 13th in the nation in steals. Hillman blocked and fouled by Engsler. First one for Emily Engsler, who is no doubt saying that was not a foul. <laughs> Continuing to say that was not a foul. Oh boy, what a tremendous senior season for Emily Engsler coming over after her first three years at Syracuse. Hillman back on the line. Okay, we talk about Emily Engsler and having a great season and how about the adjustment and the commitment that she had to make to, when she transferred to Louisville she never played man-to-man -man defense in college only the 2-3 zone demanding her energy and intensity on the defensive end of the floor she turns into an all-defensive performer well, you see her numbers right there from Syracuse to this season certainly has improved has worked on her fitness improved her, her body and her game reflects it. She wants to play at the next level. She has made the commitment to doing that. And Danielle Roush, who is very fiery, that's a kind of a contentious tie-up. As Emily Angsler, those numbers you saw on the left side of that graphic, her freshman season and got herself in ultimately into tremendous shape. And came to Louisville in part because she, yeah, that's her goal, right? Playing the WNBA and knew that playing for someone like Jeff Walls, getting away from the, uh, the you know, she left even before Quentin Hillsman left that program, knew she needed something different to help her prepare for the next level. Well, her, her versatility and her skill set, uh, it just makes herself such a tough matchup. And the improvement and the commitment that she's made to the defensive end of the floor with her length, athleticism, and her instincts. And Jeff Wall says the only other player he's he's coached with as good of instincts as Emily Inksler is Angel McCautry. And that is a tremendous compliment. Yeah, it's scary. Yes. Angel is tremendous. Foul as Leah Brown hit the floor. Well, Christy mentioned that Kim Barnes and Rico talked about wanting to get in the paint, and Olivia Cochran had all ball up top, but got her with the body down low. And now she's going to go to the bench with her third personal foul, but Louisville has Liz Dixon who can come in and fill in quite nicely for Cochran. Leah Brown is a transfer from Nebraska. This is her second year at Michigan. One of the several Indiana natives on this team. Where would Michigan be without all these Indiana Exactly, natives, right? right? That would be happy. Those Indiana ball players some love. Yeah, Keanu Smith started her career at Cal. She was an all Pac-12 freshman performer. Those long passes are so dangerous against this Louisville defense. And right now, that's about the extent of Miles Hillman's Range missed on that attempt. And we were talking about Nas Hillman and her development for the next level, and that's one of those next level developments for her is to be able to knock down that shot, to work on her ball handling. She will be a stretch four. Nas Hillman, she said she's not really focused on the WNBA right now. It's hard with social media and all of the rankings and everything, but she said she is focused on the task at hand until her season with Michigan is completed, but she is definitely excited about the possibility to play at the next level. Well, and she's focused on continuing to leave her legacy 
at, at, at Michigan. I mean, this is a player who has done things that no other player has done. Men or women's basketball in Michigan history with the 2,000 points, 1,000 rebounds, an All-American. A lot of firsts for this program with Nas Hillman on the roster and trying to make their first Final Four. Exler just got fouled for Louisville and Michigan. She does have one more year of eligibility left. Kim barnes Arico, her head coach, has nothing but, I mean, as long as you run out of adjectives yeah. to, to say what it, she has meant, transformational for this program. Exler at the line. She does have one more year of eligibility. None of the Michigan seniors have made a statement about the, if they are coming back, uh, whether there will be super seniors. Uh, Leah Brown will be a super senior next year, expecting her back. But Angsler almost got another one. But the speculation is, there's Leah on the bench, that Nas Hillman will indeed be playing pro ball next year. She has fallen out of the projected first round of the ESPN WNBA drop board, much to the chagrin of people like JBA, right, Kim exactly. Barnes Rico. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, goodness, that was nice, except she couldn't finish. And you don't get a lot of those opportunities against this Louisville defense. You got to be able to convert those. I love how aggressive she's continuing to be to the rim. This is a great move. But boy, you got to finish those. Louisville with a chance to extend the lead into double digits. Dixon looking for somebody. Ball, and that's a blocking foul on Kaiser who got in her way. Well, Louisville had this ball moving, and Chelsea Hall coming off of the handoff. You can see Kaiser still sliding out to the outside. Good call by the official. 11 more seconds put on the shot clock after the block call. Right. Ainsley turned around, found herself a pretty nice shot, but knew it was off right away. Holman pushed away from the bucket by Dixon. Now Ainsley can bring it up all by herself, hands it off to Van Lith. Out behind the back, Kiana Smith. Flash, but no finish. Well, and Pam, and that's even with Kiana Smith, what we saw from the beginning of the season to now. Her ability to put the ball on the floor, shoot that pull up, shoot the floater in the lane. We keep talking about players who want to play at the next level, and Kiana Smith's ability to score at all three levels is adding value. Angsler continues to grab all the rebounds in the double digits again. That was tipped out of bounds. Louisville has it when we come back. They have extended their lead over Michigan to eight points. Here's a look at the WBCA Coaches Trophy presented by Invesco. QQQ, which will be awarded to the national championship winning coach. And that will be awarded to the national championship winning coach in less than a week. Oh, oh my gosh, Sunday. it's hard to believe it's gone this fast. And the three teams that have already punched their ticket to Minneapolis, well, those programs already have national championships. Neither Louisville nor Michigan has ever won a national title. Louisville trying to get back to the Final Four for the fourth time. First time since 2018. Michigan has never played an Elite Eight game until tonight. Both teams in some scoring droughts right now. Angsler, tall pass for Dixon, who was able to recover, but couldn't get it home. And built checking back in for Danielle Rausch to help handle the basketball. Hillman being fronted by Angsler, who got a hand on it, and then the block by Dixon. Well, you've got two players with great length on the interior for Louisville right now. Just 
getting that pass over Emily Engsler is tough enough, but Liz Dixon, great help from that backside. Michigan's missed its last six shots. They've been stuck on 33 points for three and a half minutes. Hillman will head back to the line. I mean, we've talked about it before. It's, it's really difficult when you have teams that are so good defensively packing it in on, on Nas Hillman and trying to get her in transition. If you can get defensive stops and get out in transition, and then get her off the move. On the first side of offense, sometimes even the second side, it's not going to be there. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Final Four begins Saturday at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific on TBS. For more information on game times, go to NCAA.com. One of two for Hillman on that trip. How badly would North Carolina fans want to end Mike Krzyzewski's career by beating him? <laughs> Very bad thing. I don't think that there is a quantity number to express. And out. how badly do Duke fans want redemption yes. from the last regular season matchup? Women's Final Four starts Friday night in Minneapolis. South Carolina awaits the winner of this game. Inside three minutes to go in the third quarter. A low scoring towards the third quarter for both teams. Robinson guarded out there by William Shotcock. Skinny for Van Lip. Takes Dilt off the bounce. So good, Pam. So good. Haley Van Lip just has such a good feel. Where she never gets rushed. She's always on balance. She's locked in no matter how many hands are in front of her. So patient. Biggest lead of the game for Louisville now at 11. Another foul. Williams was hacked. When Jeff Walls talks about Haley Van Lith being the, one of the hardest workers he's ever coached. And just look at the patience, the jab, the shot fake, the jab, the shot fake. That's how you learn to read what the defender's going to do. How are they going to react? She knew Amy Dilk was going to back off. One dribble pull up. Deanna Smith fouling Williams, who is now at the line. Haley Van Lith, this is her fourth NCAA game this season. Her first three, she had 20 points in each. The only two players ever to do that in Louisville history. A couple of good ones. Angel and Asia. And Asia, yeah. <laughs> Angel McCautry and Asia Durr. Couple of pretty good ones. Or really exceptional one. Mm. Haley seven points away from another 20-point game. Feel you got in the way of that pass. And you know, Haley Van Lith is one of those players who is so focused on the team. You know, we, we talked about her early struggles in the season, one for 19 from the three-point line, but she didn't let it rattle her. She still defended at a high level. She still rebounded at a high level. She was still getting great shots, and she knew eventually they were going to fall. You know how she knows that, Pam? Because she puts in the work. Puts in a lot when of you work. put in the work, yep. it rewards you. The game rewards you. Haley Van Lerf, she worked out with Kobe Bryant at his request. Gigi and Kobe came to watch her play at Kashmir High School back when she was a senior. And she has always had the utmost respect for that Mamba mentality as she used to work out in an elementary school with her father all night and all day and had some brutal battles with him, but it made her into the tough player that she is now for Louisville. You know, the, the thing about players like, like Haley Van Lith and you know, Christy talking about those those battles with her with her father is that when somebody's hungry to be great, they're gonna do whatever it takes. You know, nine o'clock at night, eleven o'clock at night, flying all over the country to, to to practice and to work and to get better. And you know, her father sacrificing for her to, to get to where she wants to go. Yes, and, and Kobe Bryant saw her play and uh, contacted the Van Lith family and as Christy said, wanted personally asked to work out with Haley Van Lith. And Haley actually was kind of mentoring Gigi. Uh, who's younger. She lost, tragically lost both of them, and it, Van Lith was one of Kobe's favorites. Now Michigan with a chance. They were down 11 not too long ago. Nolan hit a big three. Nas just keeps on working. on the pass of Robinson. That is her second. And now Nas Hillman back in a familiar spot at the free throw line. 
talked about Enks, oh, uh, pardon me, Van Litz scoring at least 20 points in all three NCAA games. And there's Nashima, her mother, who was a tremendous basketball player, Vanderbilt. Yeah, she was. Had a high motor like Nas, a tremendous rebounder, just like Nas. And Nashima has a high motor as a fan. <laughs> she does, she does. <laughs> and I like hearing the stories about you know, Nas having, having good games and her mom being on her talking about what she can continue to do better. And Michigan on a 7 0 run, all of them on free throws, broken by Van Lick. Slicing in. Roman has had a double double in all three NCAA games this year. I'd like to have like a face cam on Haley Van List so that you can just see the intensity that she plays with all the time. Like she doesn't take plays off. She's locked in physically, mentally, emotionally, and you can see there she, you mentioned it, splitting the defender, strong finish. The intensity level with which she does everything is really incredible. You see so many players that are up and down, and, and she's not. Terrific block by Cochran, but Hillman was able to grab the rebound and got fouled again. And Michigan surviving right now by hitting free throws. They're 12 to 15. Big Ten Player of the Year last year as a junior. In typical Nas Hillman fashion, she talked about her teammates and, and yeah. got really choked up, started to cry, talking about Michigan and how much everybody meant to her and, it, and totally deflected all the attention away. Not a me guy at yeah. all. No, she's not. Incredibly humble, incredibly selfless. Loves being a part of this team and this program. Two-point ball game. She's going to slice nine points off the lead in the last couple of minutes. Angsler left open. Hillman contested at the last instant. And now Michigan has to push. Filia. Off glass. Third quarter comes to a close. Michigan with a nice run to close an 11 point lead down to just two. A spectacular block by Nas Hillman. And the folks on the bench and the folks at the watch party back in Ann Arbor thrilled by the hustle of Nas Hillman. Let's go over now to Christie, who is with Michigan's head coach. Coach, your team has done a good job of getting to the free throw line here in the second half. What needs to continue to be deliberate and intentional getting the ball inside? I think we have to try to go and transition as best we can and find the mismatches. That's been the key all game long. Try to find those mismatches because we've had them. Um, keep giving Nas touches. Layla's being really aggressive in the third quarter. So trying to get those paint touches and trying to take advantage of those mismatches. Defensively, what's the key in the fourth? I mean, Van Lith, we got to know where she is. We got to try to shut her down. No open, no open shots, contested shots, contested shots, and rebound. Hold them to one shot. Thank you, Coach. So one of these teams is 10 minutes or so away from going to Minneapolis and playing in the Final Four against South Carolina. Michigan has never been there. They're playing in their first elite game ever as we speak. Louisville trying to get back there for the first time since 2018. They are 0-3 in their previous quests for national championships. Pam Ward, Stephanie White, and Christy Winter Scott joining you from Wichita, Kansas. And Ensler wreaking havoc right off the bat. You have to get rid of it right there. there you cannot invite that trap. Emily Ensler is too good to get a hand on the ball. This Louisville team is too good at locking you up quickly. North Carolina beating Creighton last night gets the winner of this game. Stanford UConn play in the other semifinal. Kiana Smith into double figures. 
Michigan in that third quarter scored their last nine points all from the free throw line. Just in that quarter alone, they shot 12 free throws and hit nine of them. And Pam, there's 15 seconds left on the shot clock, and Michigan hasn't had a passing offense. And that is exactly what Jeff Ball said he wanted. So this is a team that likes to work the ball, make six, seven passes in offense, and now the shot clock's winding down. It's going to have to be Filio again. Angsler defended well. And lift. Through the contact from Nolan, count it! Haley Van Lift, unstoppable. See, we need the face cam on her right there. Just watch Haley Van Lift in transition. She explodes right there. The change of speed, the body control, the strength, always has her eye on the rim and love that intensity. Always fired up. Great free throw shooter along with so many other attributes. Remember folks, she's just a true sophomore. And now after the make, the big time pressure. And lift with a couple of misses. And then Brown fouled as she tried to get out of that pile. And the long arms, you're not going to be able to pass around. You need to have an option in front and an option behind. Haley Van Litt stays with it, not able to convert. Pressure from Louisville is full court. Never back down. Kind of exhausting to play against a defense like this. Leah Brown. Michigan has now missed 11 of its last 12 field goals until Nas saves the day. The offensive glass getting second chance opportunities. It's going to be really important for Michigan to stay active on the glass. Ocran turned around, found herself open, and missed everything. Gosh, Mia Brown just fumbled it out of bounds. These two teams met back on December 2nd in Louisville, Michigan. Got thumped 70 to 48. They scored 15 points in the entire first half. Different story tonight. No scoring, but Louisville, depending on number 10. Well, Pam, she's been incredible in the NCAA tournament. She really was incredible in the ACC conference as well for Louisville, but you go back to the work that she's put in, the balance, the ability to hit tough shots. Haley Van Lith with her fourth 20-point game and as many chances in this NCAA tournament. Well, you see the focus, you see the intensity in the mid-range, off the one leg, on balance, nothing but the bottom. Haley Van Lisbon, next level in the NCAA tournament. Four straight 20-point games, getting it done in a lot of different ways. Back cut, running in transition. Set you up right here. Ah, oh, no, I'm not gonna shoot it. Let me see how you're gonna play me. And then I'll pull up in your face. And then getting to the rim, scoring with the contact. And one, and again, fam, the intensity, the emotion. I love it. Haley Van Lith has done something that no other Louisville player, including Angel McCautry and Aja Durr, Tony Schimmel, and all the greats have never done, and that is have four straight games in which she has scored at least 20 points in a single NCAA tournament. There have been a lot of greats. Ooh, a lot of people who could score. Absolutely. But only one, HVL. And another deflection saved by Hillman momentarily. Chelsea Hall able to keep it alive. Van Lift just face planted. Boy, the effort for Louisville going after every basketball. And that's the thing, Tim. We're talking to this, this ball club and these players, just talking about wanting to win. So unselfish as Danielle Roush gets to the commitment to each other and wanting to do it for each other. And that's, that makes it easy to go next level with that relentless mindset with the next level in terms of multiple levels of effort. When you're sacrificing for your teammates. First year that they have not had really a go-to superstar. 
those names we just mentioned. And Harry Van Lutz said the goal was always to win a national championship, and it was more important than any individual award. And as you mentioned, Steph, they're playing for each other. They're playing to get to Minneapolis. Well, Michigan continuing to find ways to score in the paint. Nice little give and go action. Kaiser finding Roush. And those two are a great story as well. They sure are. Yeah. Didn't play until their senior year. Danielle Roush got involved last year in the NCAA tournament. But just waited their turn, committed to continuing to get better as Kaiser gets an opportunity at an and one. Stuck with the process, stuck with the program, and are reaping the benefits right now. And this is a great look inside. Kiana Smith mismatched on the block, and Kaiser going to work. Emily Kaiser in her first three years in Ann Arbor averaged less than three points per game and getting the opportunity this year started every game and was an honorable mention all Big Ten selection. 15 games she scored in double digits. Ben Lift, no surprise. And some blood they have to attend to on her knee after she got on the floor again. But yet yeah, Kaiser and Roush, who you mentioned, you know, it, it's kind of like... A, it's like a dying breed, isn't it? It These is. Kids who <laughs> stick it out. You don't have kids sticking it out sometimes for one year, much less three. No, and it, and it really is rare to come into a program and, and, and play a lot and just be given the reins as a young player. And you, you, you have to figure out the system. You have to make make your adjustments to the next level. And Danielle Roush never scored in double figures until this year. But they stuck to it. They believed in themselves. They believed in this program. And now they're in their first Elite Eight. Rouse running the point, number 23 in not black or true blue, it's pitch blue they're being called, even though it reads black. I, I like it. Looks sharp. I think the maze in blue, not the maze in pitch blue. The uniforms that they come out with this year, trying to get to the final four. Hillman, so you could leave her open for centuries and she wouldn't shoot. Yeah, I out. think she's got to attack that right there. Yeah. Go to the uh, yeah, go, go to the rim. Go. go to the rim. Be a threat. Rockhawk dying again for Felia, who is the best at taking it off the bounce from Michigan. Another offensive board for Nas, and she got fouled again. When Michigan's at their best, they're getting multiple players touching the ball in the half court. Right now, the Louisville defense is so stifling that everybody's just having to put their head down and try to make a play. Bachman just picked up her fourth. NCAA Women's Basketball Championship presented by Capital One continues and yes, concludes next week. Final four semis on Friday. Kicking things off at 6 Eastern time. Practice on Saturday on ESPN Plus and then the championship game on Sunday on ESPN. Check it all out. It's going to be great for Minneapolis. It sure is. This tournament has been outstanding. I wouldn't expect it to be anything less in the Final Four. And now a steal by Maddie Nolan. Michigan can tie it or go ahead. Fighting from behind for most of the game. Kaiser has to pick herself up now. And a charge drawn by Emily Ensler. A lot of dribbling right now for Michigan in the half court, and Engsler is in position to take the charge. And again, you see the sacrifice on the defensive end by Emily Engsler. Engsler only has three points. She's missed eight of nine shots, including all five of her threes, but you can't take her off the floor because she does things like that and defends like crazy. Van Lith says shoot it. Kelsey Hall with the miss. All had 13 points in the first half, just two since then. Uh, 
he can't pick that up. Julia thought about it, now drives on Van Lith. Tough, tough shot. Ball on the floor, nice save by Cochran, who gets it over to Kiana Smith. And Smith waits for help. And he will and he'll slow it down. Eagle is a team that most opponents would rather play in the half court rather than have them come in transition where they're so lethal. Oh, good then, rotation. Really good rotation. Great hands by Kaiser. This is the third trip down the floor for Michigan when they trail by two. Rouse draws a foul. We're coming back in a close one in Wichita. Let's take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance, the relentless defense of the Cardinals. Well, it's been terrific again today. 18 turnovers, 20 points off of those turnovers, and it really does fuel their offense. I mean, this is a team that is, is relentless. It's a team that gives you so many different looks, that plays hard at all five positions, and truly will get such great contributions from everyone that steps on the floor. They've been terrific. Let's go over to uh, Christy Winter. Scott has a big update on Michigan. Thanks, Pam. I spoke with Michigan's head trainer, Christina Fanning, and she said that Leah Brown will not be returning for the remainder of this game. She took a hard fall early in this fourth quarter, was visibly upset. Teammates, coaches were all consoling her, but she will not return. She has had issues with her foot for the last half of the season, didn't play any games in the month of February for the Wolverines. And as you saw from her line, Leah Brown just three points today, all of them from the free throw line, but she is the second leading scorer behind Nas Hillman during the season, and they will be without her for the rest of the game. And this offense struggling, so is Louisville's lately. And Michigan is a team that needs a secondary score. And not having Leah Brown on the floor certainly impacts that. Could be Thelia. A little bit too strong. Engsler grabs yet another rebound. And Pam, this is about the fourth possession where Michigan's been down to, and they've come up empty on the offensive end. And when you're playing a team like Louisville who can get out in transition and who can score quickly, you've got to find ways to put the ball in the bucket when you get opportunities. And Louisville has not scored. And Almost five minutes, Nolan fouled Van Lith away from the ball. Louisville with 52 points. That is the first of the four opponents for Michigan in this NCAA tournament that has even hit the 50-point mark. And Michigan's defense has been good. Louisville's even better in this tournament. So much on the line. Oh, great pass. Great pass. not doing much scoring but contributing in so many other ways has 14 rebounds that was her fourth assist and you just can't emphasize enough the unselfishness of this team Emily Engsler was one of those that sat in the room with us and talked about hey listen we just want to win I've never been to a final four I've never won a championship we just want to win and they play like that Nas Hillman's been called for the charge Well, this is a really good offensive execution, and Engsler just finds the open area. Kaiser has to come up, and there is nobody on the back side to cover Cochran. Approaching two minutes to go. Louisville, four-point lead, and the ball. Cochran driving on Kaiser Huge. Six point lead. Timeout. Michigan.
Olivia Cochran has been locked down on the defensive end in this tournament, and her offense the last couple of possessions has been the boost that Louisville needs. And Pam, we say it time and time again. You can't just focus on one, two, or three players on the floor. Everyone in a white jersey is dangerous, and it really makes it tough to scout and defend them. Michigan has never been to the Final Four. Louisville trying to get back there for the fourth time, the first time since 2018. The winner will play South Carolina in the early game on Sunday. Set for 7 o'clock Eastern time. UConn and defending national champ Stanford will follow. But under two minutes to go now for Michigan, which has been offensively challenged in this quarter, particularly they've only scored seven points, have not scored in almost four minutes. But you have to give all the credit to this Louisville defense. I mean, they, they just keep coming at you. They don't make it easy. And they're not coming at you in the same ways. Sometimes it's hard shows. Sometimes it's hard traps. Sometimes it's soft traps. And they just play off and use their length and instincts and athleticism. But they have kept Michigan uncomfortable. Without Leah Brown for the rest of the game, Haley Van Lip setting a new Louisville record by scoring 20 points in her fourth straight NCAA game. Nas Hillman, four for four in double doubles in the NCAA tournament as well. 52nd of her career. And Michigan needs points. Court pressure taking time off to get it across. Yep. And again, they're not initiating offense until 15 seconds on the shot clock. Kaiser. Great defense by Cochran, who is fronting Hillman. They needed the shot. Great defense. Sounds like a broken record. Great defense again <laughs> with Louisville. Well, now if you're Louisville, you want to execute on offense. You want to use the clock. The clock is your friend. You want to get the ball moving from side to side. Force Michigan to defend the entire shot clock. Trying to draw another charge. Roush was able to take it away. You got to get something in transition here. You can't let him get set. Too late. Kaiser with the three. Nas missed everything, but another offensive rebound this time. By Roush. And another timeout taken. With just under 50 seconds to go. Not overstating that Michigan needs to score. Yeah, and I think that was a missed opportunity yeah. in transition to put some pressure on. I mean, you're in the penalty, attack the rim, at least force a rotation. Maybe you have a drop pass, pass the ball up the floor. But what's happened is this Louisville pressure has been so stifling that Michigan resorts to now just putting the ball on the floor. Right, just a lot of pounding, a lot of pounding. They've been so uncomfortable. They haven't been able to make passes in transition and, and or in the half court, and now that's in your mind, and it continues to play in your mind. Take a look at the reset. Possession arrow goes Michigan's way. No more fouls to give, and you see the timeouts remaining. Engsler, the Syracuse transfer in her final season in college, trying to get to the final four. 15 seconds on the shot clock, and now Jeff Walls calls a timeout. Well, that was a different set than they haven't, they've never seen. It was a different set out of bounds that they haven't seen before, and Jeff Walls wants to make sure that they talk about it. Coming up next at Sports Center with SVP. Post game reaction from the Elite Eight. Look ahead to the Final Four. Also, a look at the historic men's Final Four. Carolina and Duke meeting for the first time. And Bad Beats Madness Edition. Looking forward to SVP. Big fan of women's basketball. We will continue our post game coverage. Louisville taking that time out, as you mentioned, Steph, after seeing a set. There you see that left eye of Olivia Cochran. Nice little shiner. She took a Tamari Key elbow on Saturday, and that was nasty, and no foul was called on that play. 
South Carolina, Stanford, and UConn all in the Final Four. All of them have at least one championship. Stanford winning it last year. UConn has not won it since Brianna Stewart left. An eternity for Husky fans, but they're back in thanks to a thrilling double overtime win over NC State. Nas Hillman will hit that shot probably 19 times out of 20. Not a foul. They don't foul. And now Louisville with a chance to seal it. Cochran with some huge buckets in the fourth quarter. Well, Jeff Walls talked to us about Olivia Cochran and said she has to be a defensive anchor for us. She was going against Tamari Key, against Tennessee. She was going against Nas Hillman, against Michigan, and she has. But boy, in this fourth quarter, she has been tremendous on the offensive end of the floor. Nas Hillman missing that layup, and Michigan not fouling right away. And Louisville just such a good job finding the open player, pushing it down the floor, and he'll take an open layup all day. Olivia Cochran with eight of her nine points in the second half. And the Louisville fans are starting to feel it. Nas Hillman, a tremendous career in Ann Arbor. Their first All-American. First player in Michigan history with 2,000 points and 1,000 rebounds. Nice man or woman. First time this program's made it to a Sweet 16, or second time the Sweet 16, first time to Elite Eight. Her fingerprints are all over this Michigan women's basketball program. Yes. An historic season for Michigan. But too much Louisville defense and too much Haley Van Lift. As we check out tonight's player of the game, brought to you by Orgain Protein, and it is Haley Van Lith. Well, she was terrific. Every time Louisville needed a play, she made it. She goes through those spurts offensively where she is unstoppable. And again, leading with that intensity, with that focus, with that competitiveness and selflessness. Lead is 10. Haley Van Lith talked about the consistency of the team this year, learning to play first without Dana Evans, finding their identity. She said, we found time to be aggressive, and we needed to find moments to be great. I think she found a lot of moments to be great tonight. She's been great this entire NCAA tournament. And it's, it's a next step for Haley Van Lith in her career. I mean, this is a young career we're talking about for, for Haley Van Lith as well, and really leading this team. She felt like leadership is the area that she has grown the most from a season ago and even throughout this season. She sets the tone with her work ethic and that intensity that you see right there in the huddle every single day. When your quote unquote best player is your hardest worker, everyone else will follow. And she's only a true sophomore. Unbelievable talent. Meanwhile, this senior class for Michigan there have not been any announcements about who or who will not come back, but let's just uh, celebrate what this senior class has done. Amy Dilt playing on not one but two bad knees. Yeah. Daniel Roush sat on the bench for three years and started all 32 games this year. And at, at the top, the queen, yeah. Nas Hillman. Yeah, and Emily Kaiser as well. And, you know, Nas Hillman, four-time first-team All-Big Ten. I mean, she is one of the Big Ten's all-time greats. Certainly should be ret retiring the double zeros in Chrysler Arena. Yeah, no doubt. She's the first player to ever wear double zeros, and she should be the last. Yes, absolutely. Without question. Julia with the foul. And Jeff Walls, he can finally exhale. To take his team back to the Final Four for the fourth time. Since Jeff Walls became the head coach at Louisville, things have turned around dramatically. They've become a national powerhouse. And he said every year, their goal is a national championship. When he first got there, Angel McCautry said, what can you do to get us out of the second <laughs> round of the NCAA tournament? Because they had not been to the Sweet 16 before Jeff got there. And now, much loftier heights. 
and they're going to be playing South Carolina on Friday night. Emily Engsler, what a gamer. 16 rebounds for E squared. He's everywhere, Pam, on the defensive end. It just amazes me. A player who for four years played in a zone, sat in a zone. And this is why Emily Angsler came to Louisville to have a chance to play for the national championship. The Cardinals are on their way to the Twin Cities as they beat Michigan. What an effort, Pam. All season long, this Louisville team has been known for its defense. They've continued to get better. They've gelled on the offensive end of the floor. And now that work culminating in a Final Four berth. Finishing this game on a 10-0 run. And the brilliance of Haley Van Lith. She looks tired. <laughs> she should. When you leave it out there, every single possession, every play, you've got nothing left when the buzzer sounds. Well, the Cardinals on their way. Leah Brown, frustrating ending to her season and perhaps her career at Michigan. But Louisville, the cream of the crop, top seed, leaves Wichita and heads north. East to Minnesota. Great season for Michigan, an historic season as they got to their first Elite Eight. Tears of joy, right? You know that feeling. 23 years ago today, you won your national championship at Purdue, so you certainly know this feeling. Hard to believe it's been that long, but sure do. Rick Walls and his family with tears of joy. And Kim Barnes Arico and Michigan. 25 wins this year, wearing that number 11 shirt. Yes, it's Isaiah Barnes from the men's basketball team, but her late brother Chris also wore that number when he played, so a nice emotional tie with that jersey. That's gonna be a happy bunch of Cardinals. Here's Christy with Jeff Walls. Coach Walls, you've been here before, but a lot of the players on your team have not. What does this moment feel like for you to see it through your players' eyes? Well, it's, it's fantastic. I mean, I got a group of kids that have fought all year long, and, you know, I love every single one of them. I'm tough on them, but it, it, it's because I care about them and love them because we want to get to this situation. And, you know, we had every opportunity to fold, but we didn't. And I was so proud of them. We made big plays. Olivia Cochran, Emily, you know, and couldn't buy a bucket. I mean, she, she's going to throw it in the ocean from the beach. But she made some big plays there at the end, and that's what it's all about. Well, she had 16 monster rebounds, but I see a lot of emotion in your eyes. What is behind those tears? Oh, it's all, it's all these kids. It's the hours we put in. I mean, you know, 15 years ago, I got to thank Tom Jurich for giving me this opportunity here. They they just, we, our goal was to get to a sweet 16. They've never been. And now we've been to four. We're going to our fourth final four. And we've still got work to do, but which is such an honor. Thank you, Coach. And Haley, take us back to the little girl who was in the elementary school shooting around, working for moments like this. What do you think she would say to you right now? She would say, you're not done, Haley. We might be happy for the one night, but we got work to do, and this team is capable of so much, and, and we're not going to sell ourselves short, so we got work to do. When that buzzer went off tonight, what went through your mind? I saw you had some tears of joy as well. You know, this team, we've been through a lot. We went through ups and downs, but we banded together, and we're doing this for each other. The 14 girls on this team, we're doing it for each other in our city, and that's why there's emotion, because there's so much passion, and, and we're not done. We're going to keep working. Your energy and your motor cannot be measured. Where does that energy come from? But I just want to win, man. I'll do anything to win. At first, they were denying me touches in the first half, but I wasn't going to stop because I knew my time was going to come, and I was setting my teammates up, and we did a great job of knocking down shots late in the second half, and, and we pulled it out, man. We were tough. You had a great relationship with the late, great, iconic Kobe Bryant and his daughter, Gigi. What do you think he would say to you in this moment? He would say, go and win this shit, Haley. That's what he would say. We not done. That's what he would say right there. Thank you, Haley. Enjoy. How much do you love Haley? Ben? I love her.
history for Haley Van Lith. Four straight games, scoring 20 points in NCAA tournament. They're going to the Final Four for Stephanie White and Christy Winter Scott. I'm Pam Ward. Thanks to Seth Miller and Matt Wilson, our producer and director. Emily Axler going on to the Final Four. Louisville going to play South Carolina. Coming up next, it is Sports Center with Scott Van Pelt. Louisville going to Minneapolis. We're going to Scott.